Welcome to the wild, wild west. That was a lot of energy that I wasn't expecting from you today, honestly. It just happened right Considering now. you almost canceled the podcast because you were too hungover, you, you <sighs> claim, even though I got drunk with you and I didn't see you drink more than like two drinks yesterday. Um, I think I had five. I don't know why you were that hungover then. <laughs> Dehydrated? Overworked? I, I think you're underworked. Yeah, definitely. Well... Do you know why we got drunk yesterday? Why, Willows? Because it was my birthday. Yeah, it was. It was, dude, yeah, it was. Thanks for saying happy birthday. Yeah, you're welcome. Happy birthday again. I'm 25, man. I feel... Wow. We're both 25. I kind of had a uh, existential crisis today. Now you know you're 25. Yeah. That's uh, how you know. <laughs> that's how you know it's happened. I, um... Quarter century crisis, baby. Yeah, there's a Mac Lethal song called Quarter Life Crisis, and now yeah. I'm, I'm feeling it. Yeah, it's weird. Um, well, you know, you know, I think my thought was, I remember, because I was just going through like my Facebook memories or whatever, right? And when I was like 16, I thought I'd be a billionaire by now. Right. Right. 30 is going to hit me like a truck. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's going to be rough. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing. I, well, I am. If you consider like net worth, I am like a millionaire, I think. Yeah, but billionaire is not that Obviously. important. Well, okay, no, I was gonna say billionaire is not the same as millionaire at all. It's so much Yeah, but the, so it's, much bigger. But it's by also magnitude. not not as important as you used to think it was. Yeah, that's fair. It's not the top of the list anymore. Like I think I heard um on a podcast this morning, there's hundred and forty six new billionaires since COVID started. Yeah, that sounds about right. And they're like the and the, of those billionaires, like their net worth has increased by like one point three trillion dollars. They're like, and that while the unemployment rate has skyrocketed, like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're talking about seriously about like a billionaire's tax, which is not even in not even an insanely high tax. Yeah. It was like three percent. I saw that um, under it's War Elizabeth Warren's bill. I think is yeah. going to cost Bezos personally like five billion dollars or something. It's like a three percent tax. Fuck off. And three percent anything more than nothing is too much is for too these much guys for, for me personally well for you personally but and you know I, we, who yes. and you know who i am personally i am willows and and this is tyler <laughs> and, <laughs> and i'm already mad at you and, and welcome to alcohol beyond this point the podcast where uh tyler gets mad at me but then we drink and it's fine then we get more um, and we also talk about business sometimes sometimes so uh Today we're just drinking some craft beer and some uh, some white shell vodka sodas, which are made by Shrug and Doctor Beverage Company. You can buy them at shrug.com. Um, <laughs> that was unedited. That was actually that fast. I I say, I see, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. How how uh, mm, low fill? <laughs> how how is how is it okay? So getting older, I'm going to free, I'm going to, th this is about, this episode is about getting older because I'm getting old now. And Very. it's, see, I'm stuck in between two worlds. That's a bad way to phrase it. But I'm not like, I have a lot of, I'm the youngest in my industry by far, by like 15 years. Yeah. Like I'm in the wine industry, right? So like, I, <laughs> I am 25 in the wine industry is a fucking little baby. Yeah. They have barrels older twice, <laughs> twice the age yeah. of you. <laughs> yeah. And, um, like they don't have anything on their property. That's that young. <laughs> so I constantly get people being like, holy shit. If I was, if I knew what I was doing when I was your age, like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I fucking heard that today too. But then I also have employees that are 18. Yeah. And <laughs> my fucking, one of my employees in the group chat was like, we were, I forget we were, we were talking about something and she's like, I don't fucking know this. You guys are old. Like, like <laughs> you fucking old people. I'm like, Ellie, I'm like seven years older than you. She's like, yeah, it's fucking ancient. Like, I'm like, Jesus. So like, I have it on both sides where like yeah. Zoomers legitimately are being like, this fucking old person wouldn't understand. I'm like, come please try me. I, I, I would, I would understand. Um, but, we, but you wouldn't, but, but, but I probably wouldn't. And then, and then I'm stuck between these, these geezers that I'm in the industry with. No offense, geezers, if you're listening. Um, I love you. I love you. I didn't call you boomers. Boomers, to me, is an insult. 
Uh, <laughs> Ge- geezers is an, a term of endearment. Is a geezer. <laughs> anyway, so I'm kind of stuck in between this. Like, how do you think? Do you think age matters in business? Like, do you think that people take you less seriously when you're younger, and therefore you can't accomplish as much? Uh, it's absolutely a a hurdle. Uh, it dep- I'd say it massively depends on industry. I feel like if you're trying to start a tech company and you're older than thirty, um, they're gonna you're gonna get tuned out by a certain number of people. But like, also, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get acceptance from the more serious people. Like, it's it, I don't know. It depends who you're looking for validation from or who you need validation from. Because I I've heard that's interesting. Yeah, I've def I've definitely heard of. Um like venture capitalists that don't invest in people. Like if you're a founder under 35, they won't give you money. Yeah. Cause they're like, well, they don't have any fucking life. Go out and get some life experience and then come back. Yeah, give take, you take some L's, come back. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. But I, then at the same time, like, well, f- for it, like for instance, one of the reasons why I kept the beard around and like started wearing a suit every day was to make people take me seriously when I was 18. Yeah. Right. Like, especially the government, because I was working in a heavily regulated industry that the government was just telling me to fuck off, basically. Like, I'm like, hey, can I stop paying half my money in taxes, please? Because liquor taxes? No, go go away, child. Yeah. And then I formed a uh, uh, it was a fake association at the time, but now it's a real association with actual members. But (laughs) I formed like an association of wine, wine and spirits makers that I was the only member and I realized, and I found out that my emails got um, answers back when I sent emails as the president of an association rather than owner of a company. rather than the owner of a company, which was interesting because I think there's just a, and obviously when you're sending emails and making phone calls, if you, as long as you sound like I, I toned down my uh, my cursing and my uh, <laughs> and my my yeah. my millennial uh, slang a lot, and uh, you can't fucking tell how old I am, right? No, absolutely not. So, yeah, no, I've, I've definitely had the conversations with clients where, you know, it's four months in, it's been purely virtual interaction, and then they find out how old I am, and they're, like, kind of pissed because they thought I was, like, 15 years older. And I'm like, well, I've, effectively, I am that, so... <laughs> I, know you, I know you haven't been doing, like, running your own business for, for too, too long, but have you had a client fall through because they're like, eh, we'd ex- we want someone more experienced? Uh, I haven't had anyone fall through because of that, but I, it, it's been brought up. It's def. I honestly, the biggest, um, instance of like age coming up, I think has been working with this, whatever JC that I was ranting about last week is, you know, he thinks he can push me around because I'm young and yeah. he was fucking trying shit again this week. And, um, uh, kind of funny side story, but. He owes me uh, a bit of money for whatever, some fixing of his fuck-ups that I did. And obviously, he doesn't want to pay me that. And uh, I've been using whatever the job site dumpster, which is uh, he's paying for. But the homeowner keeps telling me, he's like, yeah, just whatever. Use a dumpster. It's here. Like, I'm paying for it technically, right? And now this guy owes me this 250 bucks, And I, he's like, oh, yeah, whatever. Talk to me later about it. I'm like, okay. And then he was leaving. I'm like, oh, like, are we going to talk about this? He's like, oh, yeah. Um, he's like, well, we also got to talk about like all the dumping you're, you know, you're doing in my dumpster. He's like, well, why don't you think about it in your heart of hearts and you tell me how much of that 250 you deserve back. <coughs> like he says over his shoulder as he walks out. I'd be like, I owe you, you owe me 400 now for yeah. the fucking disrespect. Yeah. So he, he closes the door and the homeowner, uh, I guess like, um, his partner, um, uh, or wife, I don't think they're married, but anyways partner she was sitting in like in the room out of sight Wait, so the woman owns the house and they co-own the house i guess and so the gc is owns the house no no no. i'm saying the homeowner was in the room oh the homeowner's wife okay yeah yeah. okay was was in the room but out of sight and she heard that yeah door closed she's like what the fuck (laughs) i hear i'm like oh god she heard that (laughs) but uh yeah he's trying shit like that but he constantly does this shit where he will he starts a he starts a conversation or a discussion or he like starts shit like that, but yeah. he it's always like over his shoulder as he leaves the room. Is that just because he's passive aggressive or is yeah, best... he's super passive aggressive. I think he's non confrontational. But I he's think, not specifically doing it to you. I, I think he's a I think he's a bitch ass. Like <laughs> I don't I don't think he's half as good at you know face to face conversation as he thinks he is. Yeah, uh, and I'm like, bro, just turn like. 
turn around, let's have a conversation, square up with me. Let's have a battle of the minds. Yeah. Like, let's negotiate this out. But like, he just says that shit, and then he leaves, and then he pretends like it never happens, and then he'll like maybe try to sort it out over text, or like just hope I forget about it, or like let it go. Yeah. Like what? Like, do you think I'm a fucking idiot, or do you just talk talk to everyone this way? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like it's I hard know. to know because I, I I've had people where they've treated me with utter respect and then they treat other people like dicks and i'm like oh why are you treating other people like that's weird like yeah i don't i don't know what this guy's problem is but i think like overall age as an issue it hasn't really impacted me a lot because like i usually i come by the time i'm speaking to someone i'm i've already come recommended by someone that they trust yeah and i show up and they're like oh wow you you're much younger than we thought uh, actually, one of my first clients, they straight up said that they're like, oh, we weren't sure. Like, you look like a little kid when you came <laughs> in. But whatever, I came in, did the job super quick in and out, and they were super pleased with it. And that's, and to, like, to be fair, that's because you like wear a Caillou shirt to uh, to job sites all the time. Mm, yes, but I and, wasn't like that, pink boots. I, yeah, that, that does hurt the image <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> my little floppy rubber boots with wings on them. <laughs> no, uh, fucking... Uh, what are the what are the light up sneakers called? Skechers. Skechers. <laughs> Skechers with the lights. Or uh, Heelys. Heelys. Do you remember Heelys? Fucking rolling. My parents the... would never get me Heelys. Me neither. It's I, always my mom's like you're gonna get brain damage, and she's probably right. Yeah, there's like two kids in my like grade two class that had Heelys, and then they they like banned the you they're like oh you have to take the wheels out while yeah. you're at school because they were just heeling down the fucking hallways and shit. Danger. Which honestly, thinking back, like. School hallways are probably the best place to wear Heelys. Oh, yeah. Or like maybe a mall, like something yep. that's like buffed and waxed all the time. They're you know definitely I mean? made like, for like hallways in the mall. I'm yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty much. Pretty fair. Like where else are you wearing fucking Heelys? Um, but I, I going back to on topic, I've definitely had um, people try to take advantage of me. Um, maybe because of my age, maybe because of my uh, um, inexperience in business. Yeah. But I, we've absolutely had people try to fuck us over and be like, yeah, this is just how things work. And then we yeah. like, are like, uh, no, <laughs> like we've had fucking, I, I've had a couple, uh, like bait and switch, like, uh, I've had like a, sup- I'm not going to get too specific cause I don't want to talk, like out, ta- people. Re- <laughs> out, out anyone. Yeah. But I've had like, um, like a supplier be like, okay, here's the price. We pay the price. And then like when we need a re-up, they're like, oh yeah, the price has increased 2X or 150%. And I'm like, oh, no, fuck off. And I'm like, well, sorry, the price is the price. Like that was the intro price. Now this is the pr-. I'm like, that's not how this works. Like, you know, and then they think you got, they got you by the balls because you need the shit. And it's like, you know, it is what it is. But I've had that. I've had fucking government brush me off because they're like, go, yeah. go away, kid. Like, even today, literally this morning, I had an email. Um, we have to sign this thing every year that just basically, um, I'm, I'm under NDA for it, so I can't get too specific, but we basically just have to sign these terms every year that continues our uh, agreement with MBOL as a, with Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries as a manufacturer. There's an agreement yeah. that we're agreed to. Um, and uh, I'm like, yeah, like you, you kind of said we'd, reevaluate the agreement every year like is that going on fucking just gives me this two paragraph response just being condescending like nope you do me like not my department to like call it like basically just gaslighting me and i'm like i just respond like okay thanks like whatever <laughs> <laughs> like it's not worth my time anymore but um i don't know i i i I've, i can't think of any more examples but I, there's definitely more over the years it's, with people it's, yeah it is subtle and being like kid just big boys are talking like go get your shit together like or like when we first were stocking stuff with the with the um with the provincial liquor stores and they basically told us like we know this stuff isn't going to sell because it's not good but we'll humor you and buy it like and then we sold out like you know it, it's it's just that much more satisfying like that it's yeah. it's when, like every year you get older uh, when I hit 25 I'm like okay now I can like people are will I feel like people will take you a little bit more seriously 25 and on um, you know I was speaking to a guy today who you know we had a whole conversation and then at the end of it he's like how old are you by the way and I told him I'm like I'm 25 he's like oh 
I was like, oh shit, you're still young. <laughs> like it was one of those things where this the experience spoke for itself, and yeah. then the age was like surprising, right? I think when you get into your late twenties, you start getting that a little bit more because I mean, when you're you know confident enough, you're well spoken, you're competent in the work you do, uh, it starts getting harder for people to like assert like oh this is a young person yeah because there are absolutely people in their 30s that look like they're still in their 20s of course so you people are less like or are more hesitant to make that judgment i think but then i I also like when people are like how old are you and i'm like oh 25 and they're like holy shit how have you accomplished this um but now now i'm just old like 25 isn't young anymore it's not impressive for me to yeah. be a 25-year-old business owner. Like, everyone's a business owner at 25. Yeah, but why Why do you need to be a freak of nature? Like, Cause I'm most cool. people that get rich at this age are really fucked up and stupid anyways. Are we not? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, there's, like, I, you can probably know who I'm talking about, but there's definitely some guys here locally who have, you know, gone really big at a pretty young age. And, uh, without, it's all downhill from there without being, without having the fucking humble attitude and spirit, like they are just actually fucking assholes. Like, yeah. And I guess that's, that's more important. It's like child stars, right? Yeah. That's, that's a good comparison, honestly. And also like, there's a lot of people that go big in business when they're young and then that's the only thing they ever do. And then they're downhill from there. Every, every yeah, like business, Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> every, I don't know much about Ty Lopez other than the, Neither do I, here but in like, my what, garage. But where is he? I don't, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but there's a lot of people that are like, you know, they, 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 at 19, they start a business to make, raise a bunch of money. They get in the news. And then at 28, when I meet them at a party, they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the, was in the news for this thing I did. I'm like, wait, and they're like, oh, uh, 2011. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Did you do anything this decade? Yeah, why is that relevant anymore? Yeah. Like, well, you know, I always say like, uh, what is it? You're only as funky as your last cut, which is like <laughs> a musical artist is only as good as their, how good their yeah. last song was. Yeah. And that's exactly how it is with business. It's like, you're only as good as your last move. It's all, it's the same type of people that are sitting around talking about the good old days right being like you know that fucking that game i scored four touchdowns in high school football and it's like bro you're 33 you like let it go (laughs) i think i think that's what matters more to me at this point than like how far am i at what age because i know the decisions i made are have not always been to make the most amount of money that i could if that was my priority i would have made a lot of different decisions or if i want to get as big as i could or if i want to get as famous as i could like None of those have been my priorities, so why am why would I get upset that those are not my results? Hmm. So, like, you have to think about why... Like, what was your intent? Yeah, like, with, yeah. are you achieving your intent? And are you in a position where you're looking back at the good old days, or are you still looking forward to better days, and are you better than you were last year? Because there's absolutely those huge group of people that have these grandiosity or grandiose ideas where they're like, I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire. And they're just fucking average, (laughs) you know, maybe a little above average, but you just, that wears on everybody around you. Wears on yourself. Like you're just going to rip your life apart trying to get super rich when it's not even what you want. Yeah. What was it? Napoleon Hill said success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Napoleon Hill is a, quack maybe it wasn't napoleon hill then no but... no it probably it sounds like a napoleon hill quote but okay. like but majority of the... that book was written by his ex-wife yeah okay whatever but the <laughs> the that's the story for another day the idea was like you know a teacher whose worthy ideal is educating grade three kids as long as they're progressively realizing that ideal then that is success like they are a yeah. success right yeah and there's different context and this is something that took me a long time to realize because when i was a kid i'm like if you're not a fucking millionaire you're a fucking piece of shit like yeah I, I was never that aggressive well maybe i wasn't that aggressive with it but i i've now as i'm getting to the old age of 25 I, i'm kind of realizing that like people there's so many people that are better at me than 
at anything <laughs> and name a thing <laughs> name name anything you know. <laughs> And more successful than me in, in those regards, right? But I, I just have the ability to be successful in, in, in something that happens to get me drunk all the time. <laughs> I don't know. I think... I don't know. I think we're fucking winning for our age. I. It's more to do with just an awareness about where you are, where you're going... And just thinking about thinking about it, like just majority of people out there just aren't fucking even thinking about it. Oh, like their life trajectory, their life, anything. Yeah, well, I know a lot of people that are. Uh, they're like that. I'll figure that out when I'm older, and then all of a sudden they hit their 25th birthday, and they're like, "I'm older." Oh, yeah. Well, man, I, I was thinking about this a few weeks ago because I was uh, I was reminiscing about pre-COVID when we yeah. were, you know, able to uh, go outside and stuff. And I was looking at some of the old videos on my Snapchat memories of like, you know, going out to the bar and stuff like mm-hmm. when I was 18, 19, 20. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about some of the kids I was hanging out with and it's like, I'm like, I wonder what they're doing. And I look them up and it's like, oh, they're doing the same thing. Like the whole treading water, working your job because... You're going to school because you're going to get a better job in the future, be whatever, because you're going to save yeah. up, because you're going to do whatever. It's like, at a certain point, you need to level up, right? <laughs> like, there's, you Eventually. know. But these, like, these people are, you know, approaching their 30s now, and it's like. Yeah, the, yeah, the cocaine doesn't hit the same when you're 32 <laughs> and you got to exactly. work tomorrow. Um, Yeah. I, maybe I always, it does. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it does. Yeah, who knows? Well, because they're only working four hours at McDonald's, so it's like not like a. That's fair. Just kidding, but like, um, I remember like, I don't know if you had any people like this, but like when you're eighteen or sixteen or whatever, and you're going to like, hi, we're oh we're partying at this guy's house because he's forty and he owns his house and he's like, yeah, you know he or you don't you don't he's, he's chill you don't think about his age, but you're like yeah. oh this guy owns his house he's got a stripper pole in the basement you know. He has a bunch of alcohol. We're going to go have a host party there and whatever. And it's like super cool. And then now I look back and I realize, oh, this is a 38 year old man, year old man hanging out with a bunch of 20 year olds. Like, like that's not sad. accomplishing it. <laughs> like, a little sus. You know, that, that I have a few people like that. That like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, um, do you think there's anything we can do to, not we, me and you, but like we as a society can do to like help people find their potential, I guess. Like, do you think people get lost in, they think their potential is like unreachable, so they just don't try? I think you're basically identifying your own problem here. What, why? (laughs) Isn't where. Elaborate. uh, Like you, I should say you, people in general um, have I like super idealized versions of uh, what they think they need or what they think they should or could accomplish or what's meaningful or whatever. Like that's all gets so convoluted um, just because we've got access to just snapshots of unrealistic lifestyles. Like one of the best examples that I've heard recently that people are really trying to rally against is how like Instagram influencers are becoming Instagram moms and just having these perfect family lives with like no stains the babies don't cry everyone's happy all the time like it's just fucking people up in a big way and i think it's like just like that's fucking up a lot of you know young women that are trying to figure out how to be mothers and it's all messy and there's shit everywhere and it stinks and they're they don't look good and like it's it fucks you up seeing that and then comparing it to your own reality yeah, but is it my fault that people aren't smart enough to realize fucking the internet is not real life? It's not about being smart enough to understand it's not real life. It's like, it's just, it's subconscious. It's the, it's the Jones effect, right? Like, you can't turn that off. You can't not notice the people around you. But like, I, f- I specifically follow people with better lives than me as like motivation, as like a dream board kind of thing. Yeah, maybe to a certain extent, but absolutely has a diminishing return of like looking at what you don't have as a motivating factor rather than like yeah but i'm motivated purely by spite so when i see yeah that's someone, what i'm saying like this is a I part see, of your fucking problem when like, i it's see not... someone 
that has something I don't want. I covet my neighbor's wife or covet my neighbor's belongings. What, what's the commandment? Cover your neighbor's anything belongings. Um, and I get it. Who said I had a problem? That's not how it works, though. You get it because you run a successful business, not because you covet what you don't have. That's not how that works. That's why it's fucked up. Like, people <laughs> don't... So I should delete my Instagram is what you're saying? I'm saying if you deleted your Instagram, you would do no worse. But would I do any better? Quite possibly. Mental health-wise, probably. Well, like, joke's on you because my mental health is cured. <laughs> it's fixed. You know why? What if I, like... Because rum. Good transition into... Uh, <laughs> this is the... Uh, this is the segment of the uh, podcast that we call Shot Caller, the part of the episode where uh, you, the audience, can pick the shot that we take on the show. Um, today's uh, bottle comes from a uh, small uh, company called uh, Shrugging Doctor Beverage Company, uh, located in uh, somewhere in Canada, I think. Um, and they <laughs> they donated a bottle of um, it's it's rum. Um, we're 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 fucking with a still right now. We're not actually producing any spirits, um, for like sale, but we're just fucking around just to see, um, we have some things, things we're working on because the vodka sodas are, are, are being a big hit. So we're like, Oh, it's to still our own vodka. So we bought a still and then we're just kind of fucking around with it. So this is a, uh, a surprisingly rum. good homemade, not home. Not home. Well, it's, it's professional equipment. It's professional equipment, but uh, for, small, first small rum. batch. Uh, it's also unaged uh, yeah. ru- rum. Crystal in, clear, as you can see. Yeah, if you're ru- looking on camera. Yeah, if you're watching the uh, video on youtubecom slash uh the video version of this podcast, you can see the bottle of rum is uh, clear, pretty much water clear, a little bit of tint. Um, but that's because the darkness in dark rum actually comes from uh, barrel aging. You throw it in a barrel, or um, if it's uh, Captain Morgan, it's just dye. It's just food um, coloring. They do, they do have to age it in a barrel, though. Yeah, I know, but they um, also use food coloring. They do, yeah, yeah. A lot of big brands will use coloring. Like Kraken, too. that's just coloring. Yeah, yeah. Um, because all spirits are completely clear when they come out of the still. Go Every, figure. No matter what, <laughs> everything is. Uh, whiskey and rums get their color from the barrel. Uh, they get aged in, um, I think white rum they age in like stainless steel or something so it doesn't get any color mm. but uh in canada to sell a rum you have to legally uh age it at least one year in 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 oak barrels right um for it to be considered a rum so this technically isn't even a rum because it has not been aged for it, a year it is a rum distillate holy you, shit that it. was a heavy winded way of saying here is what we're taking for shot color if you would like your bottle <laughs> featured on shot color send it to this address on your screen right now See, the funny thing about this rum is it's unaged, but it's actually probably as smooth or smoother than most of the rum I buy. It needs a little bit of uh, ironing around the edges. It's it's harsh. But it's still smoother the than most. The flavor's nice, though. Yeah. But uh, uh, the age will absolutely fix it. We'll yeah. F- yeah. So pretty good rum. Good job, Zach. So if you want to buy it, uh, you can't. Go away. Unless you're listening to this in future land, in which case, I don't know, check my website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot that's possible. True. This isn't live? What? It just goes, it's like on air, radio broadcast, put it so, out there once, never to be listened to again. We're definitely getting better at um, not saying stuff we'll regret on, lo- on the podcast. <laughs> I remember the first episode we ever filmed, I cut out like half of it. Because some of it was just like drunk ramblings. You couldn't even understand what we're talking about. And then like there's, we're getting better at like not going off on tangents of just like stuff that nobody cares about. Like there's times where we just talk about someone just that we know. Yeah. And if someone doesn't have the context, like what are, what are they, who are they talking about? I don't know. This doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is not important. This is for like 10 minutes, but we're getting better now. I cut out like five minutes an episode. That's pretty good. Or like not including like bathroom time because there right. there are two we go, we go piss and then <laughs> whatever. Can't forget bathroom. We do take, I mean, we are drinking. We This is a podcast about drinking. Well, it's not about drinking. About, drinking is the backdrop to get our, it's the. It's the backdrop of the podcast just like it's the backdrop of our lives. It's the, exactly. <laughs> it's the set piece. Like yeah. 
it's like in in comedy films like a lot of the concepts aren't you know super intelligent concepts they're just concepts to get the characters to a funny location in which they can do a scene that's the only reason right. like you know so it's the same kind of thing this alcohol gets us to the scene gets us places wow more me more than you meaning i don't know i'm in the wine business oh gotti got it's funny me. that like i always say like people ask me what i do i'm like oh, i'm in the wine business but like out of the two things in front of us that uh that i made neither even closely resemble wine yeah even your wines don't resemble most wines hey i got some grape wines now some some yeah i mainly make fruit wines but gotta give the people what they want at least you don't make birch wine i'm trying just kidding what do you want to talk about don't sneeze on me no i'm not going to sneeze yeah, it's an interesting week for me cuz I'm still I'm still at a tipping point with my business of trying to figure out which direction do I go? Do I stay the course? Do I try to you know, get some go fast money and see if I want to go that route with my life or do I, you know, go a different route and improve my skills and potentially play a longer game which is exposing me to like definitely more risk of absolutely wasting my time do you think that you overthink these things or do you think this is an uh, adequate amount of over of thinking i think i'm putting in an appropriate amount of thinking like do you ever look one. back on decisions you're like fuck i should have just gone with my gut the whole time not really no okay i never think about decisions <laughs> no i'm two ways to run businesses i'm pretty good at like the whole roadmap of deciding one thing or not like i do look back and be like oh, this was a bad decision because of this, but I know f- That's by though. the time I realized it, I'm like, I didn't have that information at the time. Yeah, we all we always say, Zach and I, my business partner and I always say, um, if you had the same information, would you have come to the same conclusion? Yeah. And typically nine out of 10 times, probably 99 out of 100 times, uh, the answer is, yeah, I would have done the yeah, same no, thing. Yeah, no, same for me, 100%. Okay. I'm like, I've got a lot more data now and... Uh, but fucking hindsight, right? Hindsight yeah. bias. Like. But uh, but I'm using that massively to my advantage now because I'm like, I have so many, uh, <laughs> as like I, whatever I said in, in a meeting today, and I'm like, I've had, I have so, m- I have more failures than most people have even had attempts <laughs> yeah. or ideas. Like, yeah. like the, I have failed at more things than people have thought of trying Yeah. at my age. Yeah. Um, so even at old people, honestly, even some yeah. geezers are not. Uh... Yeah, and I'm talking like legitimate business. I I'm not talking like, oh, what if we had a spoon that also was like, you you got me here. Finish it. <laughs> a Finish spatula it on the other side. Uh, you ruined it. I don't know. I don't know about that. No, because saw... when you're trying to get all the pudding out of the cup, you really need you <laughs> flip that shit around and you just sloop. I saw Sport. a uh, I saw a video of a uh, spoon. And you 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 screw the handle into a bottle of hot sauce, oh. and then it has like uh, so every bite you can sque- squeeze hot sauce on like with the spoon or whatever. It's just like a self feeding. Every time you like take a bite, it like another drip just yeah. dribbles down into yeah, the spoon. Yeah, essentially you like have like a little squeeze. It's thing like a bird feeder. <laughs> or like no, a little, like a little pump. No, no, like pump a, on the end. Just no, no, no uh, like a hamster water bottle. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I'm thinking. Perfect. We have an invention, business idea. Okay, see, we're, look how put fucking, that on the list. Look how fucking good we are at business ideas. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. I've I've just been through. I've had so many failures. Like I can I can look at something now, and be like, okay, so this is what I know that I want. Um, I know it's going to be complicated to achieve. I know there's like a lot of things in between here and there that would you know I, I'd have to figure out before I make these and these decisions. But I know well enough that what matters is intent and understanding and expectations more so than like details, numbers, contracts, money. Like if intent, understanding and expectations are agreed upon when you start something, the rest of it falls into place. Yeah. I think think when people get, if you get locked up on the numbers and stuff like that, you basically you put yourself in an impossible position where you're never going to reach an agreement because it's you're trying to uh 
um, find mutual ground on speculative situations that don't exist. Like, how the fuck are you going to find mutual ground on something that's not even in reality? Like, you can't... Can you give me an example? Like, if you're trying to figure out, like, a business partnership, you're like, what's fair? If you do this and I do this, what's fair? And, like, percentage or compensation or um, timelines, like, expectate... Trying to figure out, like, okay, well, I need you to do... You know, you're going to... You're going to grow this... You're going to do sales. You're going to grow the business in this area. And, and like, you, you can talk about all these things. And then based on those um, ideas of what you think you're going to do, you're going to start negotiating and figuring out terms based on these things that you're going to do. And you Not don't even know. On, it, none of it's happen. happened yet. And you're already t talking, negotiating like it happens. And then by the time you get into the conversation, you're, fi you're going to find yourself defending the value of the work you haven't done yet so what are you saying just do it i'm saying you agree on intent understanding okay, yeah. and expectations and if you are talking to someone that doesn't understand that they're not going to be a good partner it's not worth the fucking time. Yeah. Like you're gonna, you're 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 gonna be you're gonna be spitting in the wind. You're talking to a brick See, wall. Like you, you're not gonna be able to convince someone. Like it. You, right. you should be within one hour. You should be able to understand. Like I mean, one hour of meeting someone. Yeah. Understand if like I could be in business with this person or not. I think we're on the same page as far as the end goes there, but my approach is completely different. Yeah. I say, doesn't matter about the intent. Doesn't matter about anything like that. Just start doing it, and you'll figure out pretty quickly. Well, that's, I'm saying the same thing. Okay, but counterpoint, filibuster. <laughs> no, like, yes, I'm saying the action is more important than the plan. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you. So there, but there's a certain amount then, of there's a certain amount of agreement that has to be reached for some things before the action even begins, and coming, that's where people get. This stuck. is coming from the guy that just self admittedly said you analyze. I analyze heavily, yes, but yeah. I don't analyze. Um, I think what most people analyze. Care to like, explain? Like I'm not looking at. Like I said, I'm not t I'm not thinking about numbers. I'm not thinking yeah, about yeah, timelines. I'm not thinking about profits. I'm not thinking about wages. I'm thinking about vision versus values versus like where where you are right now. Like, and because the number one thing that I've seen like break businesses, break bad. Yeah, that too. Break the the break the bad things that do the not good is <laughs> when people get into a get into something and they just assume that other people have the same values as they do or the same expectations that they do so you're saying trust no one in a, in a sense <laughs> don't don't trust your opinion of people what's the um let's refer to the 10 craft commandments I can't read that from Number here. three, never trust nobody. Your mom will light that ass up, properly gassed up, hoodie and mask up. To make a fast buck, she'll be sitting in the bushes ready to light that ass up. Something like that. That was off the dome if you if you were watching the <laughs> video version of this podcast. That was just, I think you're pretty close. That was off, me, off my memory. I have a framed um, poster of the Ten Crack Commandments in the... Uh, in my office it's a and, little bit uh, you can't quite read it from here though. I can't read it from here also um, your eyes are terrible my eyes are fucking terrible but uh, I can't read it from here but I'm pretty sure that's what it is don't, don't trust nobody is one of the ten crack commandments and I'll, don't trust yeah okay anyways I'm not gonna read it from here that's yeah. fine the, 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 the moral was yeah your, your mother will shoot you from a bush if she's paid enough was, mm. was the moral of that that commandment <laughs> Yeah, I think we had this argument last night at your uh, at your birthday party on like how much money would our birthday party with like four people. Yeah, because COVID. Yeah, uh, <laughs> how like how much money would it take to get the Manitoba government to uh re sell us the non -such? To, se to sell the non such, which is like this giant old ship that's like built. They, they literally built yeah, a museum. Yeah, around we the we ship. have in our museum in the city. We have this uh, this pirate ship 
basically. Oh, it's the sh- it's one of the ships that they came over from from Europe on. Yeah, it's like a solid wood ship. I think it's super a super rep- cramped. Yeah, but whatever. But they built the museum around the ship, and we were debating how much money they would sell it to you. And I said, "There's no fucking caught. Like they just wouldn't." And I disagree. I think there's a number. I don't. It, think it's there's... it's a stupid number. It's way too high. Well, but see, like that's not the point. Is there a number? I, I think so. There's got to be a number. I don't. I don't even know. I think if you, even if you fucking settled the the provincial debt, I don't think they'd sell it to you. No, you'd have to use the money more creatively, not just in a bully offer. You'd have to be the. You, you would can have, just give them with cash. Like. You would have to. You would have to give the money in such a way because the reason they wouldn't is because it'd be political suicide. Yeah, who, you sold the fucking nonsense. Right, like, no, so you would have to find a way to make it better than the possible consequences. You would have to make it, you would have to, there would have to be such a good, you need, probably more importantly, you would need a story rather than a price. Definitely. Or trap them somehow. <laughs> yeah, what are the, like, but, there's gotta be a way. But here's my fucking counterpoint, is that this is, this, the like, amount of money you would have to spend, you could just buy your own fucking boat. Oh, 100%. That's why, <laughs> that's like, it. it's not because it makes sense. See, this is why It's not a good thought experiment, because just no, no, build your own boat. No, it's a good thought experiment, because I, like, this is how business class should be taught. You should get an impossible quote. Like, how would you make this deal happen? And then they're like, oh, the deal can't happen. They're like, well, that's your fucking grade. <laughs> like, that would be that would be me as a professor. Like, how would you get the, like, how would you purchase the non-such? Money is no object. Kobayashi uh, Maru. Convince me. Yeah. Um, Presentation by the end of the week. Yeah. Like, give me, fucking convince me. That'd be like the best, that'd be the best fucking assignment ever. I've never seen Star Trek. Mm-hmm. But I just know the Kobayashi Maru is, uh fucking cabin kirk or one of them picard whatever is on a uh there's an unwinnable simulation at right. like starfleet yeah, yeah. academy you can't win it yeah and no matter what you do you can't win it's an unwinnable situation and but that, that's not what the, the test is just to see how you'll treat the unwinnable situation yeah but like cabin kirk or whoever like hacks it yeah. and like you know jumps so that's it's a metaphor for like um you know, the Harvey Specter, like, you know, when, when people got you cornered, b- take a sledgehammer, break down the fucking wall, like, yeah. you know, change the game yeah. that you're playing. And I think that's probably how I, well, let's do this thought experiment then. Well, how would I approach this? If the goal, like, how would you buy the non-such? If the, I can't just cop out, say, no, I'm just going to build my own fucking non No, no, you have to buy I that need non-such. to get this boat. How would I do that? Um... Yeah, no, you definitely would need to somehow frame it so that they, if they refuse your offer, they look, not only do they look like dicks, because if they just look like dicks, it goes away in a, in a week. Yeah. They need to look like they have, they, they need to commit political suicide if they say no. Yeah, exactly. So, so you need to trap them in a way where you've like baited them and they've come far enough that there's you're past the point of no return and I'm like no yeah now sell me the non-such like <laughs> like and they can't go back from there you know what i mean yeah um so here's a brilliant story that's actually pretty much exactly that that actually happened in history so this is a lawyer that was negotiating the deal for the usa to purchase the land to build the panama canal okay and uh long story short this guy was basically not going to get as much money as he thought he was going to because uh basically the the company that was going to sell the land to the u.s didn't have the actual right to sell the land mm-hmm. uh because it belonged to panama and they were like not going to give panama any of the money didn't they just invade them instead of basically long st- <laughs> but here's how that happened um and th- so they were debating of like okay maybe we're just going gonna go do it in nicaragua instead so to convince them to not do it in Nicaragua, they created this whole like PR campaign thing saying that like, or talking about, uh, they actually created stamps commemorating a volcanic explosion in Nicaragua and then sent it to like the U.S. delegates. And they're like, there's volcanoes in Nicaragua. We can't build a canal there. That's dangerous. <laughs> so then they did. Like... Yeah, no, they literally, he literally did that. 
And uh, he basically succeeded in gaslighting the U.S. Navy to invade Panama so that he could make the millions of dollars that he was going to make. But he did it through, like, launching bullshit articles through the press where Mm. he just he literally gaslit the navy into invading a a sovereign nation it's fine like it's been done crazier things have been done (laughs) like nearly a hundred thousand people died building that fucking thing and it was still seen as a victory like oh yeah no one talks about that (laughs) like we invaded a fucking well yeah yeah, they're like uh there's um uh there's uh communists um Blocking this uh, shipping lane. We need to invade them. Like, yeah, literally. I uh, fucking yeah, hate the United States. Mostly not white people died, so it was fine. Right? That's fine, it yeah. It doesn't count. As long, yeah, as long as brown people die, the United States government is 100% fine with it. Or poor white people. Either either way. Or middle yeah. class white people. Or, you know what? Anyone except the ruling class, <laughs> they can die. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Which is why you want to be a billionaire, right? Yes, <laughs> that's why. Full I wa- circle, baby. I want to be the ruling class because exactly. then I can't get my nation invaded. Exactly. You think Bezos is going to build an army? I think he'd be dumb if he didn't. <laughs> Good answer. So, <laughs> uh, back to thought experiment. Uh, you got to gaslight the government into doing it, but what would you gaslight them with? What do they need? That's all sales is. It's finding yeah. finding somebody's need and filling that need. What do they need? What does the government need? Money? No, they can just print more money. They need votes. Right. They need to get elected again. Yeah, they need to hold on to power. Yeah, they need to get elected. So you need to do it in an election year. Definitely. Whatever you're going to pull yeah. <laughs> needs yeah, yeah, to yeah. be in an election year. I think right now you would... I think it would be best to lean on like... Um, like cancel culture type of thing where it's like this keeping the non-such or representing the non-such or like just basically you just trash the non-such so bad oh my god uh, nobody wants to touch it let's make a press campaign that says it was a slave ship yeah and uh does the government you said i had unlimited money in this thought experiment right? yeah so I could just print newspapers 100%, yep. that say bribe whoever, media. bribe CBC to do a fucking expose that says not only was this a slave ship, but the the people that built the museum were profiteers <laughs> off of the slave trade. And then you hire some hooligans to start committing v- you know, some maybe racially secessionist type okay. of activity, maybe some pipe bombs okay. that didn't hurt anybody. It's fine. And just start escalating the issue, playing both sides. They're always, of course. That's what they usually do. Until until they're forced to do something. Put it up to a... You would have to get it up to like a city vote. Get it... You would, it, so then you would have to get the issue on the ballot. I represent a organization... That takes like relics of oppressive situations and turns them into positive. <laughs> yeah, you turn it into like some kind of new sculpture or statue or building. Like you're gonna build an orphanage out of this old slave ship with shitty wood. Something like that. You'd have to come in. I don't. We're getting a really generic here, but I mean, like, if you gave it, if you gave like a group project for like a week. Oh, I could definitely come up something in like a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, like, this is how. You know, like, this is the kind of thinking that I like to do. These are the kind of problems that I like to solve, because they are. Do you think it flexes your brain for when you actually need to problem solve? Oh, a hundred percent. Like I, I'm. The reason I'm really articulate in, you know, certain meetings and conversations and sales and stuff like that is because I I often like pre-plan conversations just so that I can get the result that I need. So, for example, I had a conversation with a client recently where I wanted to upsell him something that was um, like literally four times the price of what he had already agreed to. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, how do I present this without, you know, being offensive? So... 
it was something that I'm like, okay, I would like to whatever try this thing out. Your house was a slave ship. <laughs> yeah, I was like to try this thing out, and I'm like, try out this new product, and I'm like, I like the customer to pay for it. I'm like, in my in, in my mind, I'm like, I'm willing to pay the little bit extra because technically it is something that would be in my part of the contract, whatever that I supply. So, but I'm like, I'm gonna see if I can hot potato this to the client to see if he's willing to pay for it, because I mean, I'd rather not pay for this right now. So. Typical uh, socialist. Right. So I brought it up to him like, hey, how would you like to whatever, try out this new thing, sold him on the benefits. And he's like, you know what, man, I'm already spending enough on this. I'm like, no, 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 I'll pay for it. Like without hesitation. As soon as he said, as soon as he showed like, okay, I'm not willing to, if he would have been like, okay, that sounds pretty good. Like how much did you say it was? It'd be like, bingo, would have would have got the money for it. But instead he's like, nah, no, I don't. Immediately I'm like, you know what? I'll pay for it. So, the two outcomes of that conversation is either I just sold him something that um, he's like interested in, is willing to pay for, wants to buy, and is now maybe excited to have. Uh, second outcome of the conversation is uh, I'm paying for it now. It's something that he is interested in, doesn't want to pay for, but now I'm doing it for him. Now I look really good. I'm like, out of the goodness of my heart, I'm going to do something better for him than I even initially promised just because I want to do something better for him. So it's like either good or better outcome. If I didn't think about this in advance and just like pitched the sale, it could have been a good or bad outcome, right? Where he said mm -hmm. no, and I'm like, I get shot down, and it's just is kind of like a not a good interaction, right? So those are the types of things that I think about before I they happen. I don't think about anything, and here's and I'll tell you why. I am so smart <laughs> that I just, I have every, every outcome already in my head. No, um, no, I don't know. I, 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 I am. Think about the last serious negotiation you had. Too stubborn. <laughs> Think about the last serious negotiation you had. Sure. How did you, did you prepare for it? Yes. No. Think about like the last negotiation you had with your landlord. Like, yeah, like obviously I think about stuff. I'm I'm obviously just not like brain dead until I get into the meeting yeah, and yeah, then yeah. I start thinking about it. I obviously, mean, so, fucking, sometimes that is helpful. But like, I'm not fucking. I'm not like sitting down and making a fucking pros and cons chart usually. No, definitely not. Although I have done that, and I think that helps. I I think that. Laying down, especially if you're more inexperienced in business, I think just laying down all your options, not, okay, not, I won't even say inexperienced, but if the bad side, like you were just saying, like better and better, better and good or good and bad, if the bad side of a negotiation is going to hurt you yeah. more than you can probably handle, then there's no shame in being overprepared, yeah. in my opinion, because yeah. I was probably more like I would prepare more when I was, you know, more broke, like doing more shitty now that I'm like, okay. Like a lot of these deals that I try to make, I don't need them to work. Yeah. Right. Like I can be stubborn because I don't care. Yeah. There's, there's absolutely a lot of that. Which As is also you... a benefit to negotiation, like yeah. coming in with an attitude that's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to get what I want or where you're not going to do this. Yeah. Ideally you always need to have walk away power. Yeah. Because if you don't have walk away power, then you're fucking, you're stuck. Yeah. And but... if they know that. Yeah. Then. Which is why I feel really good about all the negotiations I'm in right now, because I have, I'm not in any pain. I have walk away power from everything. Like whatever meeting that I went into today. Um, I had nothing planned except for I'm like I'm I have a rough idea of what I'd be willing to accept, uh, but you know an extremely vague idea of what was gonna happen and like I didn't know anything about the person I was gonna meet, therefore couldn't plan anything and I just kind of went into it with an open mind and no expectations, but as soon as you know the conversation started unfolding, I have all of these things I've thought about in advance that I immediately have answers to. You know, if somebody asks me something... You don't have to think about it for I don't a have day, to think about can, it. Yeah. yeah, there's no thinking about it. There's no hesitation. I'm like, no, this is my stance on that. 
How'd... So my preparation is like, I think I get it from sales and like yeah. drilling scripts and writing scripts before I go into a big sale or a conversation. It's kind of that same thing, except I'm just doing it mentally. I'm, yeah. It's not like I'm, you know, in the shower after it happened thinking about, oh, I could have said that. Like, yeah, that's the worst feeling. To, uh, to yeah. be clear, I was being facetious when I said I don't think about. Yeah, no, <laughs> the I, you're obviously I was being going. hyperbolic, but yeah. like you're not, um, you're not as deliberate and analytical as I am. That's obvious. Yeah, I, but I, I think my, I really know how to use the information that I'm given. You know what I mean? Like I, like my business partner is more on the analytical side, and can give me the information at which that I know how to leverage. Yeah, <laughs> which I think both are very important both yeah. skills but how do you think is there a way like you know we were talking about having walk away power that's very important in negotiation um is there an easy way that's one one listening to this could get that in a negotiation if they're a business owner or they're whatever they're doing i mean easiest way to get it is just pretend <laughs> fake it bluff it man bluff Fuck. i'm i'm <laughs> that's the easiest way just fucking bluff <laughs> yeah i'm i'm a poker player yeah, that's I I will back that up as a legitimate piece of advice. So I'll have to update you guys on how what it's gonna take for me to get this two hundred and fifty dollars that this motherfucker owes me. <laughs> uh, it's like, so low it's, stakes. I but know I love it is. It. <laughs> it's low stakes, and like I absolutely can walk away from it and not really. But hurt. you're not gonna fucking do it. But I'm not gonna walk away on principle. Love I'm it. gonna take it as far as I can. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna go as far as threatening a lawsuit, but everything short of that, I'm down for. <laughs> like, you want me to show up, like, be like, hi, uh, Willows from. Uh, just serve him. Yeah. <laughs> Willows from uh, uh, something in law, Bergen and Bergen uh, Law Partners. Uh, yeah. Have you ever received a demand letter? Demand letter? No. I love demand letters. Oh, like a cease and desist? No, a demand letter. Okay, give me, a, give me a. Let's. I. It's, are, it's like I already it's know, like the obviously. letter. It's like the letter you get from a lawyer saying we're going to file a cease and desist if you don't cease and desist. Oh, it's before a cease and desist. Yeah. Oh fuck! No, of course not. No, I've gotten a cease and desist before. <laughs> yeah, no, it's before that. No, just kidding. I've never gotten a cease and desist. Um, I've never been convicted of a crime. <laughs> I've never been convicted of a crime. Um, I want a cease and desist. Those are funny. Um, no, it, uh, demand letters are hilarious. Like I've I've been in the room with whatever somebody when they got one. It's like and they freaked out, and I'm it's like, like, it's fucking shit, man. You don't have to say. It. You don't even have to respond. No, because a cease and desist Nothing. is. Isn't even a legal proceeding. You don't file no. anything with yeah. the government or anything. Yeah, 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 it's just a lawyer typically. I think almost always draws it up. Yep, and they say and they charge you handsomely. They say uh, like a cease and desist letter. So say your uh, for here's someone in my industry. I won't use their name. Had a product, um, a, uh, a a spirit product that was very similar. To another um, spirit, um, <laughs> you're tiptoeing hella good right now. Spirit, he can't ghost bust this spirit. Anyways, and this spirit manufacturer served my friend with a cease and desist. Yeah, he kind of busted him, busted his spirit, if you know what I mean. Um, anyway, um, and he, um, he was served a cease and desist and, uh, he, he just changed the name, but, uh, I'm waiting for one so I can tell him to fuck off. <laughs> like, come at me, actually file, like, I, file some papers and we'll talk. Lord knows I would love to represent myself in court against like a bunch of high paid lawyers. No, no, and it's probably more, make a fool of myself. No, no, it's more fun. You have a, like... I learned that lawyers don't get to have any of the fun like in the TV shows because the lawyer just does exactly what the client asks them to because they're that's what they have to do, right? They get, you didn't do what I told you to. Well, I got the job done, didn't I? That never happens. No, no, no. You get fucking fired or <laughs> disbarred. Um, no, it's it, the people behind the lawyers that get to have all the fun and set the tone in the conversation, like actually get to... Like I've been on whatever both sides of the judge's bench for you've different been behind things. the bench oh like the left and right okay yeah. I'm, i've been on both sides of the bench and it's pretty 
it's pretty epic having those conversations with a lawyer, like strategizing. It's got probably going to be one of the, probably one of the most fun things I've ever done. It was un, it was doing shit that was not cool or fun Were or you enjoyable. Were like defrauding the city of Cleveland, Alleg- mm-hmm. a- allegedly? No, 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 that never happened. You're gonna see. No, a- it was mostly like <laughs> you're uh, gonna hear a cut, an obvious cut in the audio uh, right away, <laughs> uh, and you'll know why. <clears throat> no, it was it was like it was a lot of like tenant v landlord. It was. Uh, contractor v Con- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in your time as a slum lord you uh were sued many a time Effectively, yeah <laughs> it's fine he wasn't a slum lord he was the operating's officer for a slum lord company which was, is like, not super trying better. to be like really good and it didn't work out <laughs> like you you, tr- you try to be equitable you try to be generous and people take advantage helpful. of your generosity no um well some people do no, it's not like that it? everyone takes advantage of you. It's that enough people do that it ruins it for everybody else. Like so, everyone is so fucking jaded in that industry. Like in everyone is. City, yeah. Well, we were talking about yesterday. Like, buddy was saying he had a house that the um the tenants just like turned the fucking heat off. Yeah, that's the, my my current client. Yeah, and all the pipes froze and just flooded the place. Forty thousand dollars of damage 40, to a house for no reason. For no reason, like they didn't yeah. say anything. And then there was like other clients that just turned the gas off and fucking destroyed everything. And it was yep. like, what's hap? Like, why? Why do people same, do this? Same landlord happened, uh, three months apart. He has eleven properties, and two of them that happened to two of them within well, like three months. And I remember like, like, it, it almost like that's a huge amount of money. Like if all of a sudden you have a sixty thousand dollar repair bill, like how many people can are not going to get fucked up by that? But the average left leaning person would say, "Well, stop being a fucking landlord, you parasite." Yeah, then where are you going to live? Go left get a real, leaning parasite. Go get a real. Well, government would own the housing, right? That's the. Would you though? Hmm? Do you really want to live in Manitoba housing? I'm not. I'm just being. Devil's mad, mad, mad advocate. Yeah, no the the rift between landlords and liberals is forever gonna be wide and deep, and that's why Trump is gonna win the next election. What's well, always like eat the landlords and fucking like landlords are stealing. I think the the idea is landlords are stealing a basic human right and then monetizing it, or providing. That's my art. My counter is, yeah, <laughs> like these houses wouldn't be built in or exist, number yeah. one. And like... I, the government's the, not good at managing rental properties. The government FYI. isn't good at managing anything. And I don't know what... I, I, I will acknowledge that there's probably deep-rooted socioeconomic problems that drive people to do stuff like flood a house that they're renting for no reason. But... My friend used to live in Manitoba housing and he said there was fucking people that would like just, there were like body size holes in the walls and like, yeah, that they had to patch and like they would just burn like light shit on fire for no reason and like just yep. trash everything. And it's like, why do people do this? Like, I, I worked for a company, they were uh, putting houses on reserves and they were um, government paid for built houses and they would. I think he said uh, three out of five houses that they built there were burnt down before the first person moved in. Why? What does that mean? Like, he's like, I, it was incredibly frustrating, but they just, government just kept writing checks. They just kept rebuilding houses, rebuilding houses, rebuilding well, houses. Do like, you do you think the reason like, why people, do you think people treat property that they got for free poorly because they didn't? earn it i think they treat property that they got for free from a government that was fucking awful to them okay no i'm not talking about <laughs> reserve specifically okay, Obvious, reserve specifically 100 percent justified obviously there's deeper issues um with the reserve system uh in canada's history um yeah, but like google uh, residential schools yeah well we're <laughs> I'm speaking a little bit more general than I like to. Yeah, yeah, but more, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Let's say in general, when people get, like, there's a lot of people that like are getting a house for free. They're on, you know, social assistance or whatever. They treat that house poorly. Some people. Some, but uh, I think uh, more than not, I'd say. Yeah, well, it depends where you came from. Is that free house a big deal to you or not? Because if you just immigrated from Africa and this is the first house you've had. Because, well, I've always been like that. Whenever I get yeah. free shit, I treat it better. 
Yeah. Because like, I, think I don't want to lose it after getting it, right? Like, I think it's... Why do you think... Why don't, wealth, I don't know. What is it? Wealth and prosperity is, you know, typically is handled by the people who handled their... The, when they handled... When they had a little and they did right by that, they got more or they got better. Their life improved. By and large, right? If you have a little bit of money and you handle it well, you'll probably have more money. Mm. Um, if you get a lot of money and you handle it poorly, you'll have no money. If you ha- get a little bit of money, handle it poorly, you'll still have no money. Like that's just how it is with assets, homes, cars, money, whatever it is. If you don't, what you don't take care of, fucking goes away. So when you're in low income housing, um, you're probably dealing with people who perpetually mishandle things that they own or are responsible for, whether that's people, cash, assets their fucking cell phone is broken again like it's so, I, I think yeah. it's i think it's just like it's a cycle that people are stuck in and it doesn't matter what it is a house or a pair of socks like it's just not something that like maybe obviously you've been depressed once or twice <laughs> <laughs> like no doing the dishes is just sometimes an impossible task yeah yeah like, yeah, where it's like, hey, piece of shit, why haven't you done your laundry? And I'm like, oh. Yeah, you're just like, oh, you can't get out of bed. Like, Yeah. There, yeah there's been, a million. And I have empathy for people like yeah. that, but at a certain point, I guess like. Can't afford to continue to give them plates well, to break? I don't want to do the bootstraps fucking speech because I hate when conservatives do that. Like, pull yourself yeah. up by your fucking bootstraps. Because people, there's people out some there people that legitimately can. can yeah. yeah, some people can't. But at a certain point, Just because like, you could, you assume everyone else can. Yeah, 100%. And, but at a certain point, like, there's just no one, no matter who you elect, no one's going to care about you. Like, that's the harsh reality, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, but there's, you, there, you need to take a, a base level of responsibility for yourself. Yeah. And that's not a right-leaning thing. That's not a left-leaning thing. That's just a thing is that you need to at least try and respect yourself and take responsibility for yourself to survive, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like. To, to move ahead. Because I feel like, do you think that these, like, I hate being like these people, like, but, you know, like, we okay, so we live in a communist utopia. The year is 2050, President AOC is going out for her seventh term, um, and we have free housing. Yeah. Are people still fucking up their houses? And like moving around and burning down their fucking basements and flooding it and shit and like I think the percentages are going to be roughly the same. Yeah, because people like it doesn't teach. You know, it's like the the lottery thing, right? Where like ninety percent of people are broke within five years. Yeah, giving somebody something doesn't change their nature, right? Like it doesn't yeah. teach them to change. Like, well, like I said at the top of this podcast, like the hundred and forty six new billionaires since COVID started and. A grand total of one point three trillion dollars increase in net worth, while the rest of the country is burning. Like it's already happening. The disparity is just going to get bigger, wider, more extreme, and eventually, it'll, like, either you have robust safety nets and you find a way to tax the rich, or the rich find a way to take care of it themselves, or eventually they will just break down the gates and take your shit. Which I think is fine. That's like... <laughs> See, I'm... Like, this. my favorite podcaster always says, go buy some bolt cutters. That's all I'm saying. I already have some. <laughs> like, that's just like his one bit of advice. They're like, what do you think is going to happen in the next year? He's like, just just, just invest in a nice pair of bolt, bolt cutters. I just think that whenever someone's arguing to me that we just tax the rich an extra 3%, right? It's only yeah. 3%. What... Joe Biden is going to use that money for is murdering people in Syria. Most likely, yeah. They're going to build new tanks. We Canada spent a trillion dollars over 15 years on um, stealth fighters that never flew. Yeah. Because we buy these things and then we're not in any world wars and then they get too old and then we buy new ones. Yeah, but who... Let me reverse that. 
who's selling them these fighters? It's absolutely a couple of rich assholes who just pocketed all that money. Who made yeah? Who made the arms race a thing in the first place? Yes, I agree with you. <laughs> like a uh, Tyson Krupp, you know, like the logo on every elevator you've been on. Sure. Like, does the name does it ring a bell? Tyson Krupp. Cheryl Lashick. Exactly. Right under that is Tyson Krupp. Oh, okay. Anyways, they, like, run and maintain most elevators in most cities. Like, they're a huge company. Sure. Krupp is, like, the reason that just happened, that you explained, that Canada got stealth fighters that they never used. Because well, they, they, they were the first people to come up with the idea of, like, if we create an arms race between two countries, whether or not they're at war, just make them believe that their yeah. political opponents... Um, have, have this, slightly so you need it. are they're arming up with better guns than you mm-hmm. uh, you just tell them that they're like oh should we buy better buy some better guns and then they buy some better guns and then they go back to the other guys and they're like hey you know you're these guys just bought some guns from me they're better than your guns well, yeah, you that's, probably, like that's the, why there's that's the rothschild family was you that's know why world war one started is because it was generational cycles of weapons purchasing where you know one country looked at another and said okay well we just peaked our generation of weapons cycling and uh, our opponents are at the bottom of their cycle. So we should start a war right now. Which is just, I have a bigger dick than you with, with more steps. Effectively. No, it's (laughs) literally the same thing, except it's countries doing it, not people. And the amount like, so that's why I'm, uh, if, if my taxes went to what they, what leftists think taxes go to, I would be more or less okay with paying them. Yeah. But the the fact of the matter is it they don't and it doesn't and this system is so irreversibly broken that no election will change it. No. Because something like you remember they're spending like $30,000 per cup of coffee the navy was. Right. Because or the air force because that's what the company was billing them. And yep. they were just paying the bills and not questioning it. Yeah. Like this shit happens every single day. That DARPA coffee. I follow a bot now that uh, um, tweets exactly how long the Winnipeg police chopper was in the air every night. Oh, God. Um, it's like flying pig bot or something. Yeah. There's a... <laughs> I just saw this on the way here. Uh, somebody just tagged the apartment building at the end of my alley. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a picture of a helicopter with a pig sticking his head out of it and it said pigs do fly That's with, funny. and it had the police logo on the side of the helicopter yeah. because of, like the police helicopter fucking menaces my neighborhood yeah. constantly yeah and it uh, menaces downtown where like people live and uh, no one cares and it's flying at three like, in the morning you waking people up, up and yeah this bot that i follow tweet yeah uh, it's spending like five six thousand dollars a day just yeah fucking around it's like a thousand dollars an hour to run a chopper yeah and that's where your taxes go yeah. they don't go to building roads they don't go to hospitals they, they just don't like you could put that thousand dollars an hour towards let's say drug rehabilitation facilities how instead much, of chasing the druggie how, across the city with a thousand dollar an hour helicopter how much money could it fucking possibly cost to rent a warehouse put a bunch of cots in it for the homeless people like, definitely not a thousand dollars an hour yeah fuck or six thousand dollars a day Fuck off. Like, there's there's no way I will ever concede that taxation is not just straight up robbing me yeah. until, until we are not... The shit we do in other countries and the shit we know about, I'm sure we have... Even can Canada's, like, CSIS spy agency, I'm sure has clandestine CIA-type operations in other countries... Eating See, what you're, billions of dollars that I don't... What you're defining right now is basically Trumpism. That's that's like what he ran on. It's like drain the swamp. The government's corrupt. They're stealing your money. But then Taxation's he, theft. But then he just stole all your money and used it for the exact same That doesn't shit. matter. That's not what he's talking about. This is why I tax evade. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, he... Like, that's basically what Trumpism is, is because it's like there's truth to all of that. Which means there is enough people that are sick of this shit. Like, half the people optimistically trust the government. Do you think we need a and the other revolution? Half are, probably. Honestly. The other half are completely skeptical, I'll right? I'll say it again. Mightier empires have fallen in the United States of America. Yeah. 
Yeah, a hundred percent. Like that's exactly what you're describing is nationalism is what Trump runs on. Well, nationalism you, though is like trusting the government. Nationalism is like, let's say in the context of what Trump does, it's like, uh, we that's don't, like populism, we don't, isn't it? yeah, we don't get involved in, you know, wars. We don't have to, we don't help other countries. We don't negotiate with other countries. America is America. We take care of America. We buy America. We yeah, make yeah. the best. We buy the best. We are the best. We is the best. We you, is you best. isn't you ain't yeah, like yeah. that's it just American fucking white pride that's like yeah. Trumpism so you just add like the racism on top of what you just said and that's a hundred percent what Trump runs on but the thing is like I'm I'm a big fan of like gl- world like global world economy and like I don't right. know, I don't I think borders are kind of dumb and I think country like ethnic and racial pride is dumb and like right so you're coming at it from that understanding everyone else is coming at it like you know, going by those other statements where like, why are we giving money to Israel? That's stupid. Like, yeah. Well, why are we giving money to Israel? That is stupid. So they can obviously kill Palestinians. Exactly. You know, Biden, Biden is very pro Palestine. Yeah. But Israel, he also just bombed Syria and I'm also pro Syria. So fuck off. Like, are you pro Syria? Um, I, I am fairly you certain say he bombed Syria. I think like, People give the president way too much credit. No, it was a general. Is like, I want to bomb Syria. Can yeah. I? Yeah. Um, no, I. I... All, all reports of that was like there was he was presented with five options of retaliation and he chose the least offensive one. It's while obviously Trump, while I Trump use... went and assassinated a general. They're yeah, like, here's I your also... five options. And he's like, what's worse than that? Yeah. I also don't <laughs> support that. Like, I think Al Assad was psyoped. I like read deep into that. Apparently he was like, Hey, uh, these, uh, U S backed rebels are using fucking chemical weapons. UN, can you please yeah. come here and investigate this? And they're like, uh, no, we don't believe you. And he's like, can you please come look? And they're like, no. And then five years later, the U S was like, Oh, there, there's these chemical weapons being used. It's, it's what's going to invade Syria. And the UN's like, yeah, okay. He's like, I was telling, I told you this was the U S the entire time. Like, I don't know. I, I think there's more to Al Assad's, or he hasn't disposed, deposed yet, d- deposed, disposed, but uh, and Gaddafi's m- murder. I think there's a lot more to that than than meets the eye. I think there's oh, some. We're getting deep into the <laughs> Honestly, there are evil sex demons that run the <laughs> government. We come full circle to. Sex demons. I love it. I think, like, at a certain point... We always end up here? We always end up at sex demons. <laughs> I don't know. We, I, get, we get esoteric about it, and then it just all goes downhill. Like, it's just hard to... It feels like such a losing battle to care about any of this. I was going to say, because care? Because... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, it's just, it's, I don't even want to debate politics with people anymore because it's, like, so irrelevant, I think. I think the, the fucking, the, the reason they let us fight each other and elect different presidents is because they don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Either way. Right? Like, yeah. I don't know. That's why you're polarized between Democrats and Republicans because the only thing that's scary to them is if there's another option. Yeah. Because it's six of these or half a dozen of the other. Like, they're basically the same fucking thing. Just a different rhetoric. Which, mind you, does matter. Rhetoric does matter. But. But. It's well, not going to change the, your life. Yeah, at least in the United States, though, both sides is authoritarian. Yeah, <laughs> at least they can agree on that. Like, they're both Nazis, except one is less racist. <laughs> a little bit. Well, Biden's administration wrote the fucking tough on crime bills and shit, and like... Yeah. And Trump is co-opting, r- like, racist terrorist groups. Yeah, like, he's just straight up ran on, there's a Mexican caravan heading to the border. <laughs> like, do y'all remember that? Get your fucking tiki torches. 
Yeah, and like the, but the at least whole border, Biden, the border Bi- wall thing is just turned into a massive F- FBI investigation of a bunch of fucking grifters. Fraudsters, yeah, it's so funny. Well, that's so funny. It's pretty funny. Like, and that's all we can do is like people get really mad at shit like that, just but laugh. like all we can fucking do is laugh at this point. Yeah, or just go Here, pipe bombs here's... in government buildings. But <laughs> okay, before we start inciting violence, do you have anything else you want to? talk about i say peacefully protest we were going to i think we're going to make this a segment where we have our uh ending business tip of the day make some signboards so if you don't have anything else to go i'll lead into my business tip of the day go ahead my business tip of the day is tax evade do not pay your taxes (laughs) do not pay your corporate taxes do not pay your income taxes you can pay sales tax i guess because you have to well i mean you could you could try not to, but just negotiate that out. Of negotiate the, the sales tax out of the way, but no, do See, not do not pay your income taxes. Do not pay your corporate taxes. Do not pay your business taxes. Uh, don't pay your parking tickets. Uh, do not pay your speeding tickets. Uh, do not pay your uh, fines for not paying your speeding tickets. Do not pay them a cent. If we all do that, we will smoke them out, and they will have no money to fight us back, because. All the Black Lives Matter protesters, where do you think the police get this funding? Property taxes. It's property taxes and fucking speeding tickets and shit. Yeah. That's where they're getting funded from. Yeah. So taxation is not only theft, it's also extortion because they will... Yeah, they're out there giving you speeding tickets to pay for salaries so they can get out there to give you speeding tickets. Well, and then in between those speeding tickets, they can murder some native kids. Yeah, they got to buy bullets to fire some warning shots in the back of some brown kids. Yeah, so it's fine. Um, so if we all just stop paying taxes, what are they going to do? You ever? Uh, the I hate to make a Rick and Morty reference, but there's <laughs> when the, the, time calls the Rick and Morty where he just like he like hacks into the global or the universe federation and makes one dollar worth zero dollars. And then everyone just starts killing themselves because, <laughs> like, they're in the White House. And he's like, we need to solve this. He's like, I can solve this for money. <laughs> and then everyone's just like, why, why am I doing this? I'm not getting paid by anyone. And, like, they just kill themselves. <laughs> if we just all stop paying them, they can't put us in jail because the jail people have left because they're not getting paid. Yeah. So my business tip of the day, you can save 50%. You can make 50% more profit by not paying it to the government. And... You can destabilize the global cabal and uh, stop being a little tax cattle, and that they're just milking for. That's why I don't. I don't buy into any of the. I can't co- wait for the day that this is played back in court for tax evading. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're like I'm. I don't. That that was that was not me. Alcohol beyond this point, LTD uh, does not condone actually evading your taxes. Uh, this was a satirical bit done by. And we're with, also drunk. Willows Christopher under the influence of alcohol uh, for the purpose for the pure purpose of entertainment. Uh, alcohol beyond this point, LTD. Furthermore, does never never condones any sort of breaking of laws or has participated in or has allegedly participated in any or, tax evasion in the past or been convicted of such uh, or I have never been convicted of such. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. With that being said. You it's have a tax business? season, so do nothing, boys and girls. <laughs> okay, that was my business tip of the day. You have to give a business tip of the day, though. Uh, my business tip of the day is... Um... <sighs> I can't I can't follow that up, bro. You gotta. It's, just, it's a segment now. We're coming into it. Okay, well, I'm, I'll say it, but I'm not going to one-up that performance. You, you don't have to one-up that performance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll should... change it so it's out of order. I'll edit it so mine was second. Perfect. I'll go first. Um, <laughs> I think the most important thing that I've you know realized or thought about in the week is understand your own expectations and goals, and actually really look at the hard decisions. Of like, what what are you going to need to do to actually get to where you want to go? And don't get fucking romantic about shit that doesn't exist yet, because I think a lot of people hold themselves back or fuck themselves over because you are negotiating on or even fighting with yourself about things that don't exist yet and it might not work out at all how you think it's gonna work because a plan lasts only as long as the first action yeah 
it's not going to fucking work out anyways. So don't get pissed about it now. And uh, yeah, if that's holding you back right now, um, fucking stop it. Stop it. Get some help. Stop it. The Michael Jordan where he's like, stop it. Get some help. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, no. this has been I'll Call Beyond This Point, uh, the podcast where we... Uh, I don't know, man. What are talk, we doing? Talk about Space Jam. That was kind of business, mostly. Yeah, mostly. My name is Willows. <laughs> <laughs> and my name is Tyler. That's Vote Willows on everything. That's uh, Tyler under Scram the Builder on everything. Thank you. And um, I'll call My phone on... number is... <laughs> I'll call Beyond This Point podcast on uh, on Facebook. I'll call Beyond This Point on Instagram. Um, thank you for listening and wish me a happy birthday in the comments because it was my birthday. And send us your tax returns. And send us your tax returns so I can file them myself. <laughs> on that note, it's time to end. <laughs> <laughs>